And so they make these volunteers sign non-disclosure agreements that they won't say to the public what's happening. Uh, you would think you were signing on to the CIA when you become a volunteer, but I'm not quite sure why a dog in a cage is a secret. I mean, why is it a secret? What's, what's happening that needs to be kept secret? Hey everybody, welcome to No Kill in Motion. I'm Dave Smith from No Kill Colorado. Aubrey Cavanaugh from No Kill Huntsville is here. Shirley Marsh from Yes Biscuit. And we have a very special guest today, Dana Keithley, who is the director and producer of a silent shelter, silent shelter, so not a silent shelter, silent shelter. Um, welcome, Dana. It's great to have you here today. Thank you for having me, everyone. Hey, could you give us the... The, the Hollywood pitch. What is this documentary about? I've watched the trailer, we all have, but let's tell our, our viewers what's going on out there. Uh, so the film itself, it's really kind of an intimate portrait, you know, about shelter volunteers, shelter employees, rescuers, uh, who sometimes find themselves in what we call kind of that Sophie's Choice position. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe seeing things that are happening within an animal shelter, um, abuses that are going on, uh, things that we tend to think are antithetical to what should be happening within an animal shelter. And then what happens when those volunteers and rescuers decide to finally speak out? Well, and, and, and what's interesting about that is a lot of them don't feel like they can speak out, they're afraid, right? Because if they speak out, then they may, they'll be let go or they'll be marginalized in some way. Um, and that brings me to uh, Section 1983, which uh, we talk about a lot here in the past, where you're actually protected, especially when it's a tax-funded government uh, uh, facility. You have protections to your right of free speech. And I know we've talked a lot about this before, uh, Aubrey. What do you think of... Um, well, it's really, I'm just asking about Section 1983 in general. Talk about that. It's interesting when we talk about it related to animal sheltering, because I work at a law firm and I'm not an attorney, I'm a paralegal, but we do a lot of, um, we deal with a lot of municipalities, cities and counties, and we are forever making arguments related to Section 1983 regarding violations of Section 1983. So I think, I think that people think of it in terms of context of, um, something way separated from the animal shelter world when it does have practical application. And I, looking at the trailer, um, David and I were talking about this before we, we started recording. Um, I'm pretty sure that in the trailer for your film that I, we saw Sheldon Eisenberg. So um, uh, can you talk about you interviewing him for the film and what you talked about related to section 1983? Absolutely. So just, just again, a kind of a quick backstory uh, with the film. I myself was a shelter volunteer for many years. Uh, I then ended up getting hired from my local animal shelter, Rancho Cucamonga, uh, as a outreach coordinator. So I had experience actually working within a shelter, working hands-on. Our shelter was one of the five that received a grant from Best Friends Animal society uh, that was to help the pit bull population through their shelter partners for pit bull grant. So I was hired as the coordinator for this grant as well. So I came in with a lot of experience. When we started to see things change at our shelter, it was under new leadership. So our shelter originally had been hired by Nathan Winograd to become a no-kill shelter. This was back in 2005. Unfortunately, our shelter, uh, you know, decided through the city manager and city council to not listen to Nathan Winograd and hired a series of shelter directors who were still very much steeped in that catch and kill mentality. They essentially ignored Nathan's shelter transition plan that they left him. So we saw a lot of changes happening as myself and several other longtime volunteers started to speak out we started getting pushback mm -hmm. and a lot of it came from, you cannot say this, you cannot say that, you're shining a poor light on our shelter, you can't do this anymore. And we were essentially fired for speaking out. Now, they did kind of bring up some other stuff as well, which we talk about in the film because I, I feel like shelters are now getting a bit savvy and they're saying, well, it's not for speaking out, 
Mm-hmm. It's for causing a hostile work environment. It's for doing a number of other things because now they're getting savvy to, you can't restrict people, right? It's a free speech, section 1983. And we interviewed Sheldon Eisenberg in the film and he specifically says, you know, it's a huge issue. And that huge issue is the first amendment. Government right, run agencies, which most municipal shelters are, right? They're either city or county run. They cannot be restricting you from speaking out. So it is something that we discuss in the film. We bring up several examples of where 1983 was successful in certain places. You know, we also talk about, again, why sometimes Section 1983, though, it might not work in every situation because sometimes some places are now getting savvy to, we're not going to say it's a free speech thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to find other reasons to fire you. And we go through specific examples in the film and and you'll see it. We talk about our local shelter, Rancho Cucamonga, but we also interviewed uh, a number of volunteers from New York Animal Care and Control and Chicago Animal Care and Control. Well, and and surely you have a lot of experience with a pretty regressive shelter in Memphis. I think uh, you had said that you personally knew some people that actually lost their position uh, because of speaking out, correct? Do you remember if they actually said it was because of speaking out or did they actually redirect like uh, Dana is talking about? No, no, uh, it was for speaking out. And uh, as she said, uh, putting the shelter in a negative light, and then they drew up this sort of a waiver, which I have no idea if it's still in existence, but they were requiring people to sign. Um, You know, I I just, uh, I think in any government, organization, um, you can't speak about what you see here is a bad sign. I mean, unless it's in the interest of national security, right, (laughs) which is not what happens in animal shelters, it's a bad sign. And um, if I'm running an animal shelter, the first thing I'm going to say to anybody, whether they're a volunteer or uh, an employee, is speak out about what you see here. Let people know. You know, if this is a place I'm I'm proud of, um, I want you to feel proud of it too. I want you to um, tell people what goes on here so that we can educate people. And um, the idea that that, uh, you want to suppress that, it it is sort of uh, very telling. I I, I was literally working with a shelter director here the last uh, couple of weeks, one of my favorites. I'm not going to embarrass her and put her out here without a permission. Um, But we were talking about this um, and she is not tax funded. uh, Her shelter is not tax funded, I should say. Um, And we were talking about transparency and and how, you know, she had an incident and she wants to be transparent. She was fighting to do that, making sure that she was bringing in the volunteers that were concerned um, and actually talking about it. And, you know, when I see that and then I see municipal shelters, um, that are hiding thing. I, I I just find that incredibly frustrating, especially when it's literally my direct taxes. Like it's the shelter that is fed by my taxes. I'm like, you can tax me all, all you want. I'm totally in if you're doing the right thing. Totally there. Um, and what did you find out there, Dana, with um, with some of the shelters you saw? Did I, I mean, did you did you did you find a a wide range, or were you really just concentrating on the ones that were that would go in the wrong direction. Yeah, our, our film is, and, and as you all know, um, Animal Rescue, it's, there are so many facets to it. You know, there, there are so many things you can do and we have less than two hours to kind of explore this one facet of it that really was born out of, out of personal experience. So as a documentary, our goal was really to focus on again, why are there so many cases of shelter volunteers, workers, rescuers being silenced. And when we were let go from the Rancho Cucamonga Animal Shelter, we started to do that research. So this happened in late 2012 and we were going, well, is it just us? Like what? And as we started doing that research, we started realizing, oh no, this is, this is countrywide. This is happening all over. So I was really documenting and doing that research. And what I was finding was it was a lot of the same stories. You know, I was reaching out to people Uh, through email. And I know, Aubrey, I think that's kind of how we kind of came into contact at at some point. And I know Yes Biscuit had written a couple articles as well about what was happening at Rancho. 
And we just started to see it happening more and more. So the goal was really to focus on that aspect, but also to talk about, well, here's ways that we can avoid this. You know, if shelters were, again, being transparent and being accountable, there are ways to fix this. So the film itself goes through our story and then looks at what's happening at a national level, but also then towards the end, we'll explore, well, here's ways that we can stop this. And really it comes down to, to public involvement. Did you have any examples um, you made me think of, because I know I have examples here in, in Colorado, rescues, so basically are trying to save animals and they get cut off. Um, and so now there's animals that are available, rescues ready to take them, and then the shelter says, oh, no, we won't work with you. Absolutely. Yeah, we we make a quick mention to a lot of cases. So there were very well known cases that happened in Los Angeles where they used Section 1983, because, again, they were pulling the rescuers rights. They were saying, no, we're not going to let you pull anymore because you have right brought up concerns and made us look bad. We talk about it in New York as well, where it's a very difficult process to become a New Hope Rescue Partner in New York. They're getting better, but that's because of public pressure. It's because people were tired of seeing, okay, well, wait a minute. You have people who are literally going to say, I will take this animal. I will pull this animal. And the shelters are going, no, we're not going to give it to you for whatever reason they decide, whether it's retaliatory or they come up with their unadoptable, right? That's kind of their favorite thing. And, and we discuss this in the film as well. How do they use these terms mm -hmm. to dictate and say, okay, well, we're not killing any adoptable animals. Right. Therefore, we don't have to report it in our statistics. We call that shelter math. And we talk about this and give examples. But again, going back to the rescue uh, in New York, we, we do kind of focus on this and show how sometimes even some of the incredibly sick animals, the shelter got them out, counted them as a positive outcome. Well, we got the animal out, but the animal dies, right? On the way to being transported to the rescue or the rescue or the adopters then have to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars, right? To try to save these incredibly sick animals that got sick while they were in the shelter because of poor practices. Mm -hmm. So we do have some examples of that in the film as well, where we say, okay, well, why are shelters doing this? Why are they telling volunteers and rescuers they cannot pull animals when we're saying we can help save these animals? Thank you, Dana. We're running out of time, but I wanna give you uh, an opportunity to tell people out there um, about the film, how they can, um, you know, where they can look at it. And um, I know you're trying to raise money as well as if you have a timeline. I'm just curious. Right. As of right now, we are in post-production. So we're currently working on, so general filming is done, but we're currently working on raising funds to finish uh, the sound mixing, color correction, and of course, clearing legal. So any clips, news clips or things that we're using, you know, we do have to make sure that we're clearing that have that permission. And our goal is to start submitting it to major film festivals. So our hope for that is for the fall to start getting it out to some of the major film festivals. And where can people go to actually find out more? Uh, they can actually visit our website. So it's www.silentsheltermovie.com. And we also do have a presence on Facebook and Twitter as well. So we'll be posting some updates as we kind of move through post-production. Super. Well, Dana Keithley, director and producer of Silent Shelter. We're really looking forward to this, Dana, I think, uh, from the trailer. Um, it, it's something I really want to see gets out there. We're also here with Shirley Marsh of Yes Biscuit, Aubrey Kavanaugh from No Kill Huntsville. We'll see you again in No Kill Motion next time. Thanks, all. Thank you.